paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. There are people who are so rabidly homophobic, and I just find that fascinating. It's as if you met someone who was absolutely spent all their life trying to get rid of red telephones. You go, what? It, it, you know, you just you would not understand it. Why would someone bother to attack a group of people who mean and do them no harm? This is a series about gay people and the trouble people have accepting them. I'm good, do. How do you do? Over the last you, two years, when time allowed, I travelled to meet some of the most notorious homophobes on the planet. Senor Deputado, Stephen Fry? To challenge their prejudice and to find out where their hatred comes from. Gay people, um, most of them, are lying about their problems. Well, You're really not making any sense, Deputy. You really aren't. Homosexuality is fantastic. You should try it. I will arrest you. I will arrest you. But when your penis is terrorizing my someone... My penis isn't! My penis doesn't do that! I also had a chance to meet some of the people who are victims of this prejudice, as well as those fighting against it. I never feel to sleep with a woman. It's a yak. <laughs> I'm born a queen. Só que eu nunca imaginei que o não vir do meu filho para casa que ele estivesse morto. Of course, this matters to me because I'm gay. But homophobia impacts on all of us. It diminishes our humanity, and you can find it all around the world. Quite simply, this is about love, commitment, and mutual respect. It's extraordinary to think that after 200,000 years on the planet, humankind is still struggling with how some of us love. Even here in Britain, gay love and marriage still give rise to some very heated debate. I've already visited parts of Africa where the solution put forward about gay people is to kill us. And I've been to America where some think we can be cured. In this film, I want to know about the future and what the countries that will be the powerhouses of tomorrow have in mind for the next generation of gays. I'm heading south to Brazil, a country that in just 25 years has gone from widespread discrimination against gays to full legal equality with its straight citizens. The city of Sao Paulo hosts the world's biggest gay pride parade. Four million people, gay and straight, joined in celebration of rights that were once unimaginable. The future for the next generation of gay Brazilians looks dazzlingly bright, thanks to the lights of João Silverio Trevisan, who was amongst the first to stand up and fight. Imagine you are 20 years old, and, and I was to put you in a time machine and take you to this event. You would not believe it, would you? I could not believe. I mean, it makes me cry. When I, when I stood on the float and I saw all the people, it <laughs> makes me cry. <laughs> and they were I jumping cry. up and down. I always and cry. Singing. And it just I makes you so proud and so happy. So happy. I'm yeah. very happy too. Yeah. I'm very, very happy. It's really beautiful. I, I fought all my life for my right of loving. Yeah. 
And when I see these, I, I feel like part of each one. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. fantastic. It's truly fantastic. It's You're a hero. You're a real hero. And I admire you so me much. Me too, me too. So much. If there is anybody on the planet who hates pop music played loudly, people gathered together in damp, unpleasant conditions, being physically tactile, it's me. I would rather have my liver sucked out through my nose than go to Glastonbury. And, and an event like this is usually the kind of thing I would most hate. And it's not just my own gay pride that makes me love this. There is something quite remarkable as an atmosphere. I don't think a camera or a, or a microphone can capture it, but I do think that the future lies in people coming together like this, not to protest, but to celebrate. But the Pride Parade conceals a darker side to gay life in Brazil. The sheer speed of progress here has given rise to an anti-gay backlash where a gay person is murdered every 36 hours. Before the evening's parties begin, I'm dropping in on Brazil's most glamorous drag queen, Renata Peron, who's paid her share of the price of progress. One day, you were crossing the, the Praça República, and a terrible thing happened. Can you tell me about that? É, por volta das 23 horas, no, no final de semana, numa sexta-feira, Eu estava atravessando a Praça da, da República e fui atacada por nove caras. É, a princípio não, não se sabia se eram skinheads ou se eram é, punks. Sei, sei que eram jovens, rapazes entre 18 a 22 anos. É, um, eles me viram, partiram para cima de mim e deram um chute com uma, uma bota que tinha uma placa de ferro. É, bateram aqui assim mas foi o suficiente para estourar um rim. Então hoje eu só tenho um, um, um rim, um, um rim, né, como diz. Many people would never go out alone again. They would retire into a small, like a snail, into a shell. Um, but you've done the opposite. You've come out like a butterfly. Casos como esses que aconteceram comigo é, são cotidianos. Não é uma, um caso único específico comigo. O Brasil inteiro está repleto de muita homofobia. Então, é, é, precisa que uma pessoa sofra uma agressão como essa para que ela é, tome consciência do, da sua importância enquanto ser humano aqui e comece a lutar. A minha arma para lutar contra o, o preconceito é cantar, é levar alegria para as pessoas. This is your answer to the violence and the homophobia that you were the victim of. Sim, que eu não saísse de casa de, depois disso, mas eu sou guerreira. Eu coloquei uma belíssima peruca, fiz um make-up e saí louca, voada, para a rua, com 15 dias depois. Uau! Beautiful! <risos> é, você é muito simpático, gostei muito de você. Pensei que era uma pessoa... Oh, thank you. <risos> you are too kind. See, my trouble is I'm too lazy to be a drag queen, as well as too ugly. No, but no, no, existe gente freia. Só existe pessoas mal maquiadas. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved drag queens. It's one of the, if you like, sort of surprising things to some, is that those who are the most femme, those who glam themselves up and are more than camp, they're actually feminine in their dress and their attire. Um, are probably the most courageous of all the gay community. Historically, it was the it was the drag queens who fought the police at Stonewall that began, kick-started really the gay liberation movement. It's, um, I suppose, the the daily act of walking down the street in drag makes them often be at the very forefront of of the, of the strongest and most angry reactions against homophobia. It's, it's bound to happen. Are you ready? Pronto? Okay, let's go and. Uh, do the final bit of um, zhuzhing. I'm coming, my darling. I'll just do your arm. Sim, por favor. <laughs> Devagar. Yeah. Oh. 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 oh, oh, oh. my goodness, is that for me? Sim, claro. Thank you. It goes 
Goes with my Norwich stroke Brazil. Top. Una drag queen brasileira agora. Oh my god. You think? <laughs> I look like Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. Mind your heels. After all its triumphs, the fight for gay rights has once again stepped into the political arena. And this time, Brazil's children are at the center of the debate. A fierce battle has broken out over a new law which proposes to outlaw homophobia and to educate teenagers about the damage it causes. Your own personal Jesus. Someone to hear your prayers. I've come to Someone Rio to, to meet Congressman Jair Bolsonaro, who's determined to block this law and along with his supporters in the religious and conservative right, bring an end to the advances of the gay rights movement. This at a time when anti-gay crime is on the rise in the city. Reach out and touch faith. A year ago, on the streets of this Rio suburb, a 14-year-old boy called Alexandra Ivo was abducted by skinheads as he returned home alone from a party. Reach out and touch me. What followed was a hate crime that shook the entire country and changed his mother's life forever. Angelic? Oi. Steven. Prazer. Boa noite. Prazer. Prazer. <laughs> Hey. You can you can smell him. He's still here. É. Aí a gente às vezes eu tô com muita saudade, aí eu venho para buscar mm -hmm. o cheirinho dele. É, yeah. hoje é o que eu tenho de Alexandre. Aí não tem como yes. me desfazer. Yes. É o que eu tenho. Não vou achar o cheiro dele, mais nada. Só aqui mesmo. Só aqui. Uh, Meu um, bebê. Yeah. Alexandra was out with gay friends when the gang first spotted him. Angelica believes they targeted him simply because he looked gay. Né? E aí a gente se depara com, com o falecimento dele e, e, e vem a identificar que o falecimento dele se deu por preconceito, por intolerância, né? por homofobia. Primeiro que ele era um menino que estava saindo da infância e entrando na adolescência. Ele não tinha preocupação nenhuma quanto à questão de orientação sexual. E then one terrible night almost a year ago he, he he was taken he was taken away quando ele tá retornando para casa aí eu falo com o que com o que foi levantado pela polícia e aí meu filho foi sequestrado foi torturado mais ou menos durante duas horas ele foi torturado fisicamente psicologicamente Ele foi agredido de todas as formas que vocês possam imaginar, né? E não satisfeito com total agressão que eles cometeram com meu filho por mais de duas horas. Isso dado, falado sobre pelo legista que fez o exame cadavérico dele. Eles enforcaram meu filho com a própria camisa dele. Só que eu nunca imaginei que o não vir do meu filho para casa que ele estivesse morto, porque eu tive que ir na casa onde aconteceu a festa. Eu tive que ir no local onde largar o corpo do meu yeah. filho, que eu tratei, que eu cuidei, que eu nunca quis que ninguém machucasse. Até chegar ao ponto de entender o motivo que que para mim não tem motivo, entendeu? Que o meu yeah. filho era uma criança, mas que ele fosse adulto que ele se, 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 se vestisse de outra forma, ninguém tem que tirar a vida de ninguém por nada, por nada, yes. por nada. Aí aqui tem ele. Sim. É, aqui. 
Isso. E ele, isso. Ele aqui. E aí aqui ele tá aqui atrás. Dançando a valsa com a irmã. Ah, isso. Aqui. Isso. Yeah. So young, so very young. The three men accused of murdering Alexandra were never prosecuted. Had anti-homophobia laws been in place, things may have been different. What, what do you say to people like the politician um, uh, Jair Bolsonaro? Uh, you know, he thinks that gay people should shut up and that he doesn't believe that homophobic crime is a serious matter. E ele que teria que me explicar o porquê que meu filho sofreu essa violência. Eu queria saber se ele teria palavras para justificar o que o meu filho sofreu. Que eu mereço a justiça e que eu mereço a lei da homofobia para yeah. fazer justiça no caso do Alexandre. Yes. Thank you for opening your heart and the life of your son and your home for us. It means a great deal to Thank you. My last stop in Brazil is to meet Rio Congressman Jair Bolsonaro, the politician who is blocking the proposed anti-homophobia law and education program. Senhor okay. Deputado, Stephen Fry. Sim. Nice to A meet number you. of right-wing Christian groups support him in this, including some neo-Nazi groups. Though it may be a struggle, I'm determined to keep my cool with him so I can try to get to the bottom of why he feels so threatened by homosexuality. Whoa! Very beautiful. Fantastic. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Lindo, see, wonderful. Yes. I'm sure you remember the case of Alexandre, who was killed, 14, 15 years old, uh, and he was tortured. And the police and everybody involved in the case believes it was a case of a homophobic attack. Seems to me there is something deeply wrong in Brazilian society that such hatred every other day apparently there's a homophobic killing in Brazil. Inclusive grupos querem usar esta este assassinato que por vezes pode até não ser por questão de da opção sexual dele, mas se inclui na opção sexual porque passa a ser uma bandeira para grupos homossexuais, dizendo que matam e executam, mas eles não querem discutir Então não tem essa causa toda para se causar esse clamor popular. Não, não existe esse clamor popular aqui. Não existe homofobia no Brasil. A maioria dos que morrem, 90% dos homossexuais que morrem, é. eles morrem em local de consumo de drogas, em local de prostituição ou executados pelo próprio parceiro. Eu entrei nessa, nessa briga aqui, dita aí do, dos gays, tá? tendo em vista a proposta do governo em querer distribuir nas escolas públicas do primeiro grau né, um material didático que seria para combater a homofobia, mas na verdade estimula o homossexualismo em criança. Não é questão, é questão de normalidade. É interessante que você usa normal. Eu tenho um grande interesse em zoologia. Há 480 espécies de animal que exibem o homossexual, mas apenas uma espécie de animal na Terra que exibe o homofobia. So which is normal? Tua cultura é diferente da nossa. Agora nós estamos nós não estamos preparados ainda no Brasil, porque nem um pai, nem você, nem eu tem orgulho de ter um filho gay. Well, orgulho, I prazer, have... fazer festa. Yeah. Porque aparecer um filho gay If na família. If the child is happy. You see, it, it, the only reason they may be unhappy is because they know there's homophobia in society and therefore their child may be bullied. But if the world is not homophobic, then why should a parent worry? Você tem que ter um norte na tua vida que quer que os heterossexuais continuem gerando crianças para que essas crianças se transformem em gays e lésbicas para satisfazê-los sexualmente no futuro. Então esse é o exemplo da sociedade brasileira que está sendo plantada aqui agora por esses grupos que eu chamo de fundamentalistas homossexuais. I never ever wanted anybody to be gay who is not gay ever. I think it's the most absurd idea. I also happen to be English. I don't want people to be English. Phobos is the Greek for fear. Homophobia is fear of gay people. I wondered how in a society why people should be afraid 
of gays. Não gostar não é a mesma coisa que odiar. Não. Não. Você não gosta dos talibãs. Não. Tá ok? Nós não, o povo, a sociedade brasileira não gosta de, de homossexual. Nós não perseguimos, não existe grupos aqui no Brasil de caça de homossexuais. É bastante aberto no Brasil. Não somos o Irã. Não se yeah. condena a pena de yeah. morte, né? Os homossexuais. Tanto é que tem passeatas de orgulho gay. Estamos pensando em fazer uma passeata do orgulho hétero. Pensamos fazer isso aí, inclusive. Yes, you Sim, should. Sem problema. You should. Você, I, I você não será convidado. Absolutely. Você não será convidado. Mas você no, vai. I should be invited. Você vai. No, I, I should be invited. <risos> That must rank amongst the strangest and most chilling encounters I've ever experienced. Bolsonaro is typical of homophobes I've met all over the world, with their mantra that gays are out to take over society, recruit children or abuse them. Even in a progressive country like Brazil, their lies create hysteria amongst the uneducated, from which violence can grow, that can end in brutal attacks, like the one that killed Alexandra Eva. One can clearly see that it was a homophobic crime, which makes the politicians' shrug of the shoulders all the more appalling to me. Because yes, while it's true that there are always going to be murders, there are some sorts of murder that you can deal with. You can get rid of hate crimes, and you do it by education, by just showing people. It, it's quite simply much easier to be gay if you live in an area of a city that is full of educated people, because educated people aren't filled with hatred towards gay people. It's as simple as that. You only hate when you're ignorant and you're afraid. And ignorance and fear is fostered by a lot of things. Poverty is one. I'm afraid I'm going to have to come out and say I think evangelical Christianity is another. I think fundamental re religion is very much its part of its agenda to encourage ignorance and a very narrow education which has often very unpleasant things to say about gay people. I hope if, if, if these films do anything, it is they reinforce the fact that behind every statistic there is a, a, a beating human heart. While Brazil should certainly celebrate her progress, she should also be vigilant. Because if history has taught us anything, it's that progress can be reversed. Russia decriminalized homosexuality back in 1993 at the end of the Soviet era, but now it appears to be regressing. The government is becoming increasingly conservative, while the Russian Orthodox Church has become the most powerful institution in the country. So it's no surprise that homophobia is rife. <laughs> Nationalist and religious extremists are thriving. And in a recent poll, 50% of Russians said they feel disgusted by homosexuals. Now, even the law is beginning to target gays, beginning here in St. Petersburg. Well, St. Petersburg always used to have the reputation of being the most liberal and advanced city in Russia. Tchaikovsky, Diaghilev were amongst its most famous citizens, both of whom were gay. And then, just a few years ago, a law was enacted which made it illegal to promote homosexuality to minors, which is an almost impossible thing to control as a law. Everybody agrees that forcing people under the age of consent to try and go one way sexually or another or indeed to groom them for sexuality is a completely separate and absolutely correct crime but 
not to educate the young in the possibilities of sexuality, especially those growing up with the feeling they might be gay, is to store up terrible trouble. <laughs> The man behind the new law is the deputy of St. Petersburg, Vitaly Milanov. He believes he can prevent a new generation of Russians from becoming gay by banning so-called gay propaganda. It's created an impossible situation for gay parents here who could now be accused of promoting their homosexuality to their own children. It's just right here. Oh, oh. slippery. <laughs> Russian winter, you yeah. always need to be careful. Olga, a local activist, has arranged for me to meet some of those living with the fallout from the law. Dobry Hello. 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 Hi. Whoa, nice and warm. I should take my hat off. Irina and Olga have been together for 12 years and each have one child from previous relationships. 20-year-old Daniel and Christina, who at 16 is still considered a minor. According to this new law, every day you are breaking the law by promoting homosexuality <laughs> to Christina. Just it actually seriously worry you that the day may come when you as a family are threatened by this new law. Living as children of gay parents has affected Daniel and Christina, though not in the way some of you might expect. They are both happy and they are both straight. So much for gay propaganda. No, I think it's a stupidity. No, I don't understand the law in general. When I meet people who are homophobic and start talking about this topic, то есть рассказывать про геев, если потому что они начинают нести полную чушь, и э, если они вспоминают этот закон, то я их начинаю спрашивать, видели ли они вообще людей на улице, которые стоят и, ой, здравствуй, вот мы геи, не хотели бы вы к нам присоединиться и absurd as it is the impact of this law shouldn't be underestimated. One in every four gay teens here has attempted suicide, yet it's now illegal to offer them information or support. I'm dropping in on a group called Coming Out, which was set up to do just that. Aha. But now its days hello. could be numbered. Hello, everybody. Hi, Good evening. Hi, Hi hello, Olga. So I would Hi. like to meet, meet Dara and Maxim. Dara, hello. Maxim, hello. Do you find life difficult at your age, being gay? Have you had a bad experience of it, each of you? Наверное, самый печальный мой опыт был, когда на тот момент я был очень открытым человеком, то есть я всем рассказывал о том, кто я. Обо мне прознали такая группа людей наших прекрасных, как нацисты. А, причем достаточно резко настроенные, они устроили мне темную а, вечером, уже очень поздним вечером, я возвращалась домой через парк, около своего дома, на меня напали 12 человек с битами, с ножами, в масках, меня избили, а, меня очень серьезно ранили, причем ранение в живот было очень серьезное, я пролежала очень долго в реанимации, 
мне пытались тогда после этого еще один раз те же самые националисты поймать. Один из них э, э, в подъезде меня подкраулил этот человек, в подъезде моего дома, и э, пытался меня изнасиловать. Э, э, кричал, ты просто настоящего мужика не знала. Там. В общем, ну, все стандартные, вот все эти фразы, они настолько стандартные, настолько yeah. избитые. Did you try and ask for the police to catch these people? Were the police interested, or mm. were they just as homophobic in a sense as the gang? Я обращалась в полицию. Я прошла, я сказала, что вот так и так на меня было совершено нападение. Выслушали и После слов о моей ориентации мне сказали, иди ты, девочка, погуляй лучше. I just wondered if you were, in a sense, ashamed of your country. You have a leader who talks about people like you as if you are freaks and have no rights um, in the 21st century. Does this make you angry and ashamed? Все мы знаем то, что в нашем очень странном российском обществе есть такая прослойка людей, которым необходимо кого-то ненавидеть. Мне действительно, мне не то, что даже стыдно, мне просто обидно за свою страну. Но когда я вижу то, что творят наши политики, мне просто плакать хочется от досады, от обиды. Чем дальше, тем хуже, ни в какие рамки совсем уже не лезет. I'm sure there isn't a gay person in the world who doesn't know what it feels like to be threatened because of your sexuality. But it makes my blood boil to think that in a modern city like St. Petersburg, the police will do nothing to protect you, while Deputy Milanov, who is also training to be a priest, sanctions their behavior. It makes me respect Daria and Maxim and the other kids like that for their, for their bravery and their courage in coming out and in, in helping others come out. <clears throat> because they live in perpetual fear of of getting beaten up, of getting physically threatened. Um, it's a real, a real fear, and it's one that's endorsed by politicians. It's just very, very sad that such a beautiful and extraordinary culture should be in the hands of that mixture of nationalists whose knuckles graze the ground and uh, hypocritical priests who dare to presume to tell the world how to act on the basis of what? No extra knowledge, no extra insight just um, authority to take on themselves. I've just learned that Milanov is willing to meet me, may be flushed by the news that his anti-gay propaganda law is about to be rolled out across all Russia, a country I happen to be rather famous in. Hello. And perhaps sensing an almighty row, the media is out in force. I'm very happy to talk to you, but after I've spoken to Deputy Milanov, if you don't mind. You're right there. I, uh, I have an appointment and I don't want to keep him waiting. Um, <laughs> That's really not the most convenient uh, time to do that, but I'm happy to. Look at Putin, look at Dobby the house elf, and remember that's all he is, he's a little house elf. Wish me luck. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Now, you mustn't make me late for Deputy um, Milanov. I'm following, who am I following? Through here? Hello. Hello. Here we are. Deputy Milanov. Good day. Very good to see you. Thank you for giving me your time. Uh, I wonder, Deputy, if the first thing you could do is just explain to me, because these things get complicated when people report them and then report them again, exactly what it is that you have made a law here in St. Petersburg. What, what is now illegal that used to be legal? What is illegal is un uncontrolled public statement forming the incorrect impression about social equality of uh, single, of same sex and uh, traditional families. We also can speak about some historical figures. So you're not allowed to say that, the, that say, Tchaikovsky's sexuality was anything to do with his talent? That would be breaking the law? No. Even if the, if the fact that Tchaikovsky was unhappy about being gay, and it gave him the, the conflict that is in his music. It's a crime to tell kids that only this way of living 
made him so <laughs> talented? Nobody would say that. Ah. But what they might say, Deputy, they might say is, look, you're 15, 16 year old, you're being bullied, but don't worry, there were some great men who achieved great things who had the same sexuality as you. We would be quite unhappy in case some inadequate uh, individual would invade kindergarten trying to explain to uh, minors that they should identify their sexual identity. They don't invade kindergartens and tell children to have their sexual identity. That is absolute nonsense. You're, you're inventing a ridiculous enemy for, to, for, to, to get support so that, so that ignorant people will imagine there is this terrible threat to children. The real threat to children is, as it always was, ignorance, lies. Because they will grow up to find out they've been lied to and they won't thank you for it. I spoke to a girl yesterday. She would, they tried to rape her, to cure her of, her of her homosexuality. She goes to the police as soon as they find she's a lesbian. Go away. The police no, don't it's, respect it, it, it's her It's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale because no, she was uh, lying. gay people, gay people um, most of them are lying about their problems. Because most of wow. them would like, they would like to be... Uh, uh, to, uh, to be favored and famous because they're victims of uh, Russian medieval uh, uh, behavior. You're no, it's, it's in absolutely a fantasy world. The problem is that she became lesbian, not because her uh, her um, uh, uh, genetic uh, de defect, not because her Look, mutation. you really ought to stop because you're making a great fool of yourself on camera. This is going to be shown around the world. And if people hear you speaking like this, they're going to think so little of Russia. They're going to think, is this man actually allowed to use the street and the telephone, let alone be a politician? This don't. values that you're proclaimed as a modern and tolerant is a values that were created from the first uh, hour of uh, having this world, when the most talented angel felt because he, th he thought that he is greater than uh, is God, right? you know? Woman. You're really not making right. any sense, Deputy. You really aren't. You, uh, half a politician, half a, a semi-educated uh, religious person. I mean, whom do you represent? I'm not here to attack Russia. I love Russia, and it's better than you are. In your generation, yes. the number of homosexual people were much less. Were a number. Much less. <laughs> less. How do you know this? How because do you know I it? Know that Tell me how figures, you know it. Scientific figures. Published by whom? published by scientists. But name them. Where will I find these figures? I mean, I'm not going on and on and on about all the dreadful things you've said. Say what you like, but don't make it a law that causes people to commit suicide. You have more young Russians killing themselves in this land of because sacred they're parents. Standing out oh, it's because of the values. liberals make them commit suicide. Yes. I just don't know how you sleep at I night. I can sleep after I pray. <laughs> anyway, I have to go and um, speak to these um, nice people out here. I fear I failed to sway Milanov, but it seems a shame to waste the media attention when others out there might see sense on this issue. I think everything should just calm down about this. It's not a big issue. All it's about is tolerance and acceptance. And I, it may be that most Russians, if asked in a poll, would say they disapproved of homosexuality, they didn't think it was traditional Russian. Well, fine. But there are so many other things for the world to worry about. Concentrating on making gay people a kind of scapegoat, like the Jews were in the 1930s, seems to me a very dangerous sign. I do wish every lonely teenager out there, I wish them all the love in the world, because it's the richer the group of young people who are unusual you have in a country, then the greater the culture. So thank you all very much. Sorry, bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. It was like trying to nail a jelly to the wall, to be honest, just to try and get him to express his point of view. He, maybe he felt the same about me. Um, it's clear he doesn't like anything that he considers liberal. It's, it's the biggest insult in the world. He didn't understand my point of view. Um, it might be arrogant of me to say so, but I think I understood his, um, but just didn't feel it was a point of view that could be, should be enshrined into statute. I'm not trying to interfere with the traditions of, I mean, that's the word you come across all the time, tradition, but it's just, the tradition is what? Torture, inquisition, um, illiteracy, disease. Those are traditions, if you want to go back 400 years. The other tradition is progress, is trying to get things right, slowly, painfully, uh, often making mistakes, but with the best will 
that you can muster. Some of the mistakes that us Brits have made in the name of progress can take centuries to undo. India is on its way to becoming a global superpower and is shaking off the last vestiges of 200 years of British rule. It's recently overturned the Victorian law that criminalized homosexuality and now, embracing its Hindu traditions, is forging its own way forward with respect to gay rights. I've come to India because around the world, the experience of being gay can be looked at in tyrannical countries, it can be looked at in democracies, it can be looked at in countries that are going through transition. Um, but India is, is the largest democracy in the world and is so notable for its incredible insistence on family. I wonder how much um, gay life is, even exists here because the culture is so different. I've been invited to meet the Ayer family, whose 33-year-old son, Harish, is one of the first to speak openly about being gay in India. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. He's He's my father. Ah, and hello. that's my professor. Oh, hello. Hi. Hello. And this is my grandmom. Hello, grandma. And this is my mother. This nice is my mother. Nice to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. I'd love to meet you. Gay men usually end up living with their families because in an Indian culture, you end up looking after your parents. Does that make it difficult for you to have a relationship? Because you can't bring a partner home, can you? Um, now I can. Yeah. Uh, my grandmom is pretty conservative though. She was okay with me getting a partner home, yeah. but she wanted the partner to not be a Christian, to not be a Muslim, <laughs> to, <laughs> to be a Brahmin. Right, okay. so you're high caste. So, so yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> fine for her. It didn't really matter to her whether it was a boy or it was a girl. That's very, very interesting. Can you remember when Harish told you that he was gay? Yeah, a little bit it was a shock. He is a family man as such. He loves family, he loves people around him. He, in fact, he wanted to get married and have children. He is very fond of children. So that made me a bit sad. How are you with your neighbors and everyone else today? Is it a, was it's it like I don't go broadcasting that my son is gay. But, but at the same time, no, when the they son ask goes me. Broadcasting. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> literally <laughs> broadcasting on television. Your neighbors must know. It's a, uh, you think? Uh, but they just don't talk about it? They don't, at far. <laughs> to me, they haven't spoken so far. But, but Except one or two. Yeah. And you are comfortable with your sons? Yeah, of course. No problem, yeah. Because it has become, we cannot do, avoid it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The most important thing I, you would think like a parent is for him to be happy. We want yes. him to be happy. That's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the thing that people have in India. In the end, he's happy this way. My mother accepts. Mm. My father, he's not accepting per se, but he doesn't mind yeah. my sexuality. Yeah. So, so I feel both in a way is, um, is very important. Family is absolutely central to the nature of India and the identity of it as a country. Everything is expressible through the family and understandable only through understanding the family. And uh, so to see a gay man living with his family, not having been rejected by them, not having been shown the door, but being accepted, is really impressive. And uh, I think it shows that everything's come a long way. It's rather terrific. the remnants of the old Raj still even in a city like Bombay and in fact the the sexuality laws of, of India were also dominated by the Raj right up until 2009 when the coat it's rather bizarre actually I think I've just seen a it is a rainbow flag I don't know if it means the same here that can't be it says to closet hang on Hi. Hello. Hi. Are you a gay shop? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Hi, I'm Stephen. I'm in there. Hello, hello. That's myself. Hi, I'm Sonia. Ah, nice to meet you. It's like Soho in London. <laughs> yes, it's like London. It's fantastic. 
Did you successful? Yes, yes. Have a look around. I will do. Thank you. Oh, yes, all the really good gay stuff. Are you here as a customer? Yeah. Are you gay then? Yes, I'm queer. <laughs> and and uh, just girls? You a lesbian or you? Uh, I'm bisexual. You are... but, but I have a partner right now. A, a male uh, partner or a female? A female partner. Right. In some sense, I mean, I does feel uh, uh, very alien, this concept of being, I mean, identifying as for my sexuality. Our culture, we have a lot of stress on marriage. Yes. And uh, men can afford to uh, not get married or, you know, somehow uh, the stress on marriage is slightly lesser, not, not yes. entirely, but on women, the stress for marriage is a lot. Women can't really speak about their sexuality as openly. So as a woman, having to not only say that I'm uh, bisexual, queer as well as bisexual means that in some sense I'm implying that you know I have these desires mm. and speaking about de desire itself in India is a little you know and yet the weird thing is it was the British who brought in the law that said being gay was a crime I didn't know it was not gay they used to um, unnatural yes. buggery or whatever the word they used sodomy or something um, so the idea that it's not natural to India was never put into laws before no. the British no. before the Raj Actually, India has a culture, uh, I mean, for people who actually study it, which was very inclusive. Even the Kama Sutra really speaks about gay sex as well. But people don't want to really, you know, see that. It's very funny because they don't realize they are following the British in some <laughs> sense. Just before you leave, I want to give you a uh, uh, oh, thank you, you for dropping into my store. Me. You look very so nice in this, by the way. <laughs> thank you. You're so kind. This is just the right size. I have yeah. There you are. I'll take a little train. I'll give you a gay hug, a <laughs> friendly hug. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Jahan teri ye nazar hai, meri jaan mujhe khabar hai. Jahan teri ye nazar hai, meri jaan mujhe khabar hai. While Mumbai's fledgling gay culture shows promise, part of the LGBT community has thrived here for centuries. The Hijras are India's ancient male-to-female transgender community. They were once celebrated in Indian society and believed to have a connection with the gods. Some even held prominent positions in royal households and government. But then the British arrived and ostracized them. Today, the Hijras live in slums where many scrape a living in sex work and have been hit hard by the AIDS virus. But accessing proper health care has been difficult because the government is only beginning to recognize their gender identity. Shunned by society, they've relied on each other, and I've been invited to meet Gowery, who's opened her home as a respite center. Hello. You must be Gowery. What's that for me? Oh, that is for our welcome. It is very traditional to welcome. How lovely. So you're Thank the you. guest for the, my house. Thank so you. all queens just want to welcome. Done now. Please come. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's gorgeous. So this is our community center. Yeah. Where we work with hijras. They can stay for three, four days over here. And once they get OK, they can go to back to the place. And I, I understand it's a particular problem with the hijras is that they're now more um, rejected and, than they have ever been, partly because of the high infection rates. I've read that it's as much as 49%. Yes, it's 49%. It's amazing. But there's nothing you can do about the fact that society has changed so much since the early days, the very early days of hijras, yes, which was much yes. more open and frank about sex, joyful about yes, sex. Yes, I, I totally agree with you, because what happened, when the British came, <laughs> and they don't want it, because yeah. see, in Bible they have written that anal sex is not, you know, mm. natural. Yeah. But I say, it is a natural. Yeah. I never feel to sleep with a woman. I say, <laughs> yak. <laughs> I'm born a queen. Yeah. I'm born as a hijri. And I love to be what I am. And who the hell the God will decide? This Thank is you. my anal. So you set your heart on on actually having the surgery to, yeah. um, to, 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 to complete gender reassignation. It used to be pretty They used to tough. just cut it. Yeah. No anesthesia, nothing else. And the dye mice took, just cut it. Oh, my goodness. But now it is different because you can have it properly done. No. See, I will tell you. And, now, still no? in India, people won't afford, my queens won't afford, so they go to a quack doctor and they do this castration. Oh, yeah. 
so it's quite painful. So they sometimes they cut the urethra. Oh my God! So they don't know. So you can't control your urine. Oh, that's awful. Yes. So, but you see, the desire is. I would just. I just want to remove it. I just want to remove it. There is a, a procedure called vaginoplasty as well, isn't yes. there? Where you can actually replace the what was the penis with with and a sort it's of. It's very costly. You see, yeah. it is not to go and just sit you, in. You've your, not undergone this. I have got oh, no vaginoplasty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to leave my vagina, vagina, vagina. So and I will tell you the funny thing, when my operation did it, and then sister came and she said, uh, your operation is done. So I say, that is proper, no? You Can have I? made proper, no? Uh, she said, what a question of proper, because age of 25 years, I have never seen a vagina. <laughs> so first, and the I first one you ever saw was your own. And I first pussy, and I never <laughs> seen other pussy, and we just asked sister, and it was quite funny. She asked sister, can you show me? She said, no. <laughs> Look at yours, she gave me a mirror. She wouldn't like it. She she's hers. very open and friendly like that. And I saw the mirror and said, yeah, what do you have done? <laughs> <I'm> done. <laughs> See, I'm not ashamed that what I have done with myself. No. I'm very proud. much proud. Yeah. Because I have not cheated any woman. I have not cheated myself. But then also, I don't have got to come and stand in front of my dad. <laughs> Look, your son. Now then, after 20 years, I don't know. I know that he won't never accept me. He will, they, they will never. I know that. We are alone. Miss. Once we have leave the family, biological family, we again here come and we made a family. When you've been thrown out of your own family, the next best thing is to make your family yourself. These, these are the, my family. Yeah, see, exactly. Look at the you Julie. Have a Julie's just 19 years. Really? Oh. She's just 19 years, and before five months, she has castrated. Yeah. If any hijra will walk on the street, anybody will come, hi, hello, darling, how are you? Hey, why are you free in the night? Hey, look nice, boobs, and they will just tease you and go. Because they know if I will tease any hijra, no one will ask me. We are the puppets on the street. Anyone will come and just ditch you and go. Bye, I ladies. Love you, bye, bye. Thank you. Chelly? Put her. It's upsetting to hear how rejected the hijras have become. But it's made me realize that even amongst my own gay community back home, transgenders are often the least accepted and understood. As India's gay community gets organized, it's showing signs of reaching out to its more vulnerable members. And there could be a lesson in that for all of us. You are. I'm Pallav. You are, you are Pallav. I love to meet. Lovely to meet you. So this is where the Hamsafer Trust right. has That's its home. Right. This is this is the reception area of the Hamsafer Trust where we yeah. receive people who come in for HIV testing or receiving services. Avina Ahair is trying to offer an alternative to sex work for her community, and has set up the country's first transgender dance troupe, the Dancing Queens. 30% of transgenders are actually literate. Mm. They are at least literate till graduation, yeah. under graduation, but none of them been given an opportunity. Yeah. Henceforth, they get into the sex trade. Uh, nobody wants a transgender in their neighborhood. But this is how society yeah. is. Yeah. This is how society is. People will make and which comments. is very funny because you worship Lord Shiva, which is in form uh, uh, which is which is a combination half body of a man and half body of a woman, mm. but you are not willing to accept a transgender in a yeah. society. When you talk about hijras, people always presume that they belong to a lower class of society. None of them have an employment. None of them, uh, none of them have a dignity of living. And yeah. on top of that, we are trying to impose our moral values on them. So they should not be doing a commercial yeah. sex work. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, they no, do not have an option. No, it's terrible, isn't it? It is all about giving that first chance to the community. Absolutely. And it will happen, I'm sure. It'll be too slow for Absolutely. anybody's patience, Absolutely. but it will happen.
Before I bid a fond farewell to India, I've been invited to say a few words at a club popular on Mumbai's up-and-coming gay scene. Whoa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for welcoming me. Um, I am here uh, uh, because it's part of a documentary I'm making about being gay around the world. Um, now, what, you may think, have I, have I concluded about India? What yeah. am I taking away tonight, in fact, which is my flight back home, sadly? Um, I shall carry you in my heart forever. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's all right. You are such an easy lay. Um, <laughs> um, it's a very extraordinary thing. Everybody has told me how important family is, how extraordinarily important, how difficult it is to come out. Not because your parents are actually disgusted by homosexuality, but because they're slightly embarrassed about what they're going to tell Mrs. Patel next door. Um, and, uh, <laughs> just, um, but once they get over that, they're more interested that if you're going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, that they are, they're a doctor or they've got a really good job. <laughs> and if they have, then it's fine. And I have to tell you, that is the most balanced and sane response that I've come across. It seems apparent to me that this is one of the most comfortable countries in which to be gay. Especially, of course, and this is your duty, especially if you are educated, English-speaking, middle-class. Let's be honest, it's, it's easier for you than it is for the hijra in the slum. And, um, uh, and, and therefore, I should imagine that you were all as excited uh, 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 in, in the years to come in, in pushing that out into the suburbs, into the rural areas, to, to make it really count. Wouldn't that be exciting? I think so. Um, In the two and a half years I've been making this series, the gay issue has continued to be debated at home. Many years ago, I had the great good fortune to meet someone. She and I have loved each other this ever bill since. weakens what exists and replaces it My with a less good option. It is as foolish to condemn those who have homosexual proclivities as it is to condemn them for having red hair. And I have lived with that all my life. And now, one of the most dramatic steps ever taken for gay equality has come to pass. Well, it's wonderful to come back to a Britain um, where we are celebrating the news that a, a House of Commons and even a House of Lords has passed into law a gay marriage bill, which could soon be enacted um, such that people really will be able to marry people of their own gender. Uh, that's not that anyone would have me, but it's still fantastic news. But it's not enough for laws to change, of course, attitudes have to change. Uh, it was here, after all, in Trafalgar Square itself, the very centre of London, you would have thought one of the safest cities in which to be gay in the world, where Ian Bainham, only a few years ago, was savagely kicked to death. So homophobia is still a world problem. Homosexuality isn't and never has been. Homosexuals are not interested in making other people homosexual. Homophobics are interested in making other people homophobic. I think we just have to take stock of ourselves very honestly and independently and simply to, uh, to love. Um, uh, it's really that simple. It's all about love. Is the dirt that you made? 